Shalom, shalom, mishpaka. I pray all is well with each and every one of you. I pray that um, everyone is continuing to endure through the times that we are in. Um, I was given this thing, a uh, word about sometimes last week, and I was just say lying on it. But yeah, I have it put a fire under me to um, come before you. And I have scriptures, but I don't write down typically what I'm going to say because I like Yahuwah to just give me what to say as I come before you all. And number one, as I was preparing my heart, um, we are living in times that people are desperate. Um, desperate because they want to have some relief of the torment. Desperate um, because they have a desire to be free. But many are not willing to separate from sin to actually be free and this is what Yah gave me he said is it deliverance or is it witchcraft when you're not willing to depart from what is keeping you bound you are tapping into sorcery and witchcraft and soothsaying to get a type of relief from the torment that you are in instead of breaking those altars instead of breaking those covenants instead of breaking um, those commitments to sin you just look for ways to be relieved from the consequences of sin and continue in folly and that is witchcraft and another aspect of this that is important for me to bring out is, yes, there is deliverance and there is deliverance ministry. And that is true. But many of the things that we have learned to be deliverance ministry was often witchcraft and sorcery. Um, I grew up in a very much Pentecostal upbringing. So when you have that, you, you get very familiar um, was seeing the spiritual things. At the same time, as I go deeper in the walk with Yahusha, I also realize that when people are infected, um, if they're doing perversion, if you have pastors abusing people in the assemblies or churches, if you have um, deacons or elders doing the same and watching porn on the side and then they think they can show up for Shabbat or, and pray for you and that's okay. Um, no, it is not. You are not. It's actually a strange fire unto Yahuwah which is also witchcraft and sorcery. And what happens when you have people who are influenced by the demonic like that and they're praying for you, it's actually a transference and initiation of the demonic realm. Just like when you see Musha or Aliyahu who pass their mantles on to the elders, um, it's the same thing in the demonic realm. If someone who is being possessed by a principality is praying over other people, they are passing that influence, that sorcery um, to those people as well. So these are all things that need to be examined because one thing that people don't realize is Yahuwah gave us the tree of life. He is the life. He said, do not eat of the tree of good and evil, the knowledge of good and evil. So what that means is sometimes we get confused with that white magic and try to collate thub, but it's dysfunctional and it's actually witchcraft and sorcery in the spiritual realm. So we have to become aware. What are you trying to do for your deliverance? And are you trying to, are you end up tapping into witchcraft to get it? So I wanted that to be essentially brought out because... We are living in such dangerous times and oftentimes witchcraft and the level of witchcraft and sorcery is so strong that it's counterfeit. And when I say counterfeit, it means that it looks almost like the real thing that it only takes. It's the Ruach of Yahuwah that gives you the ability to discern the difference. Without his Ruach, we won't be able to discern. Um, so it's very important. So I'm going to go over a couple of scriptures and where I feel that I will stop. So Shemoth 
Exodus 22 and 18, it says, you shall not suffer a witch to live. And when you read that passage in chapter 22, it's like, yeah, I just bust that out when he's telling um, Yasharal the things that they shouldn't and should do. Uh, witchcraft is so dangerous that the minute it gets a little foothold in, it corrupts entire, assembly, entire congregation, entire nations. That's how powerful witchcraft and sorcery is. That's why Yah says you cannot even allow a witch, a warlock, to even live amongst you because it will corrupt the entire nation. So Debarim 10 and 8, or 10 through 14 says, There shall not be found among you anyone that makes his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that uses divination, or one that practices sorcery, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination unto Yahuwah. And because of these abominations, Yahuwah Elua drives them out from before you. You shall be perfect with Yahuwah Elua. For these nations which you, you shall possess hearkened unto sorcerers and unto diviners. But as for you, Yahuwah Elua has not suffered you to do so. And this is so important. So as a nation, Yahuwah wanted a set apart nation. He said, I'm giving you this land. I'm going to drive all of these things out from before your face. You will not do any of these things because you are mine. And I have called you to be perfect unto me. And so we have grown up in the land of captivity. And this is where I believe many people are struggling today. When you grow up in the land of captivity, we have been not where our, before us, some of our ancestors were in captivity, but they still knew who they were. They still knew their history. They still knew their culture. We have been deprived of that. So we've grown up in such a dysfunctional way with these things in our lives as first nature. As uh, Dawood says, in sin did my mother conceive me. So in a society based on nothing but sin and corruption. So we grew up with enchanters. We grew up with divination. We grew up with witchcraft and charmers and consulting with familiar spirits and wizards and necromancy. And to the point that it has become so familiar that we can't discern that it's wrong. And a lot of people um, will take these things that have become familiar and try to bring it into the truth. They don't want to break covenant with it. They don't want to remove it out of their lives. It's familiar to them. And deliverance requires the um, importance of being uncomfortable being willing to do what's uncomfortable. Deliverance requires going out of the comfort zone, just like the children of Yahshua at all. They had to go to the wilderness. But a lot of people, when they go to that uncomfortable place and Yahuwah is like, your redemption draws nigh, just be still and I will fight for you. They're like, this is too uncomfortable. I don't like this. I'm, I'm going to go back to what's familiar to me. So that's why in the children of Yahshua, all in the wilderness, all they did was complain about, I want Egypt. I want Mitzrayim. Why did you bring us out here to kill us? Because it feels like that. When you're dying to your flesh, it feels like this ain't the place for me. So we go and pursue sorcery and witchcraft for relief just like when Musha was in Mount Sinai getting the word from Yah they could not wait on Yah they chose like where's our Elohim we need a something to praise we need something to relieve us I don't know what happened to that Musha so then they went to idolatry they went to making a covenant with a false deity and now they're 
filled with witchcraft and sorcery. Now they're filled with rebellion. Now they're filled with bitterness because of their choice to do abominable things. And a lot of people are saying they want deliverance, but a lot of people aren't willing to do what's uncomfortable. They go back to their familiar patterns and therefore they are tapping into witchcraft and sorcery and they don't even know it. Because what looks like familiarity and comfortability in the natural is a whole deity and principality in the spiritual. So when you say you want deliverance, make sure that you're saying you're willing to do what's uncomfortable. Make sure you're saying you're willing to destroy the altars that you have built that are unyali. Make sure that you're willing to say that you're going to let go of that sin and surrender everything and confess everything, every detail unto Yahuwah that you might be set free. Make sure you're not operating in man manipulation or control. These are all forms of witchcraft. And I'm going to go and read first Shemuel or Shemuel Rashan, um, 15, 23 through 28. And it says, for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubborn stubbornness is an iniquity and idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of Yahuwah, he has also rejected you from being king. And Shaul said unto all Shemuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of Yahuwah and your words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Now therefore I pray you pardon my sin and turn again with me that I may worship Yahuwah. And Shemuel said unto Shaul, I will not return with you, for you have rejected the word of Yahuwah. And Yahuwah has rejected you from being king over Yashraal. And as Shemuel turned about to go away, he laid hold upon the skirt of his mantle, and it rent. And Shemuel said unto him, Yahuwah has rent the kingdom of Yashraal from you this day, and has given it to a neighbor of yours that is better than you. And also the strength of Yashraal will not lie nor repent. For he is not a man that he should repent. Then he said, I have sinned, yet honor me now. I pray you before the elders of my people and before Yashraal, and turn again with me, that I may worship Yahuwah Eluah. So Shemuel turned again after Shaul, and Shaul worshiped Yahuwah. And that is First um, Shemuel, Verses uh, chapter 15, 23, all the way to 31. And the reason why I read all of this is very powerful. If you know the story of King Shaul, you know that, you know, uh, Prophet Shemuel would give him things that he, Yahuwah told him to do. And he would always manage to do some of what Yahuwah said, but then do it his own way. Like, you, you know, uh, this one, he's been told to kill all of this uh, specific people. And... He decided to keep some of the king, tried to keep some of the good of the cattle. Um, and, you know, Prophet Shemuel was like, Yahoo is done with you. He's already found someone else that's going to be obey him is after his own heart. And the reason why I read down, because I found it very interesting. This is what people do. We're going to talk about King Shaul. We know that it's saying here, rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. So rebellion, if you are operating in any form of rebellion, that is a sign that you are definitely ruled by a spirit of witchcraft and sorcery. Um, and this lets us know that, and also he says, because we always, we don't talk about this, stubbornness is as the iniquity of idolatry. So your inability, so you're being rebellious, which means you're going your own way. You're being stubborn, basically hardened of heart, is you're worshiping another deity. So we have to think about that. When Yah gives us a word, is our heart hardened? Are we quick to do it? Or are we rebelling, going, going and doing something else? Because we think that's what's best. And so Shaul was operating in this. And he's saying, well, please forgive me. I sinned against you. 
because you know I don't let I listen to the people more than he feared the people more than he feared Yah. And he was trying to basically people please. And so Shemuel's like, no, I'm turning against you. But he continues to pull on Prophet Shemuel. And so eventually he turns back to King Shaw. And this is what I felt was interesting. He said, well, please forgive me so I can worship Yahuwah. And he grabbed the skirt of Shemuel's mantle and it rent. And as you see, he's like, the kingdom has been ripped from you. But he's still crying out to Prophet Shemira. And he goes, please, I pray you before the elders, like, let me worship. Turn again with me that I may worship Yahuwah. So Shemuel turned again after Shaul. And Shaul was able to worship Yahuwah. But the thing is, when you go down and you continue to read... The thing had already been made fully manifest. Yahoo had already turned from King Shaul at that point. So a lot of people want to be, it's like in a delusion or a denial of what is really happening. In delusion or denial that your heart has been hardened, you have done witchcraft, but you don't really want to actually change. And at this point, it's, it's too late. But he's still like, well, come back so I can worship. But we know that the prophecy was already fulfilled. Sha Shaul was never able to humble himself and to actually turn away from his sin because we know that Yah turned him into a reprobate and that these um, spirits were able to torment him. And it was only through the playing of King Dawu that King Shaul was able to get any type of relief. He was double-minded and unable to come to a complete repentance. And we don't want to be in that double mind where we know we're in sin. And like, oh, well, come back so I can worship. We, how are you going to give him a pure worship and you double-minded and full of idolatry and rebellion? We must purge the rebellion. We must purge the idolatry. We must confess that we, yes, yeah, I have been operating in idolatry. I have been stubborn against you. I have had a hard heart against you. I have not loved you like I said I loved you. I have not served you like I said. Forgive me. Break these covenants. This is the real work that people do not want to do. So they rather be soothsayed with witchcraft and sorcery. That's not deliverance. That's deception. That's manipulation. And so, as I continue, I'm going to go touch on 2 Kings, Melakim, Shani, chapter 9, verses 22. And this is talking about Yezebel, which many people call Jezebel. And this, verses 22 says, And it came to pass, when Yoram saw Yahu, that he said, It is peace, Yahu? And he answered, What peace? so long as the whoredoms of your mother Jezebel and her witchcrafts are so many. And I wanted to bring out this verse because people are looking for shalom. They want shalom desperately, right? To the point that they're going into witchcraft and sorcery to try to get it. To the point that they're in strong delusion. And to the point that they want a, a false sense of shalom with sin instead of true shalom in Yahushua. But there will not be any shalom as long as the whoredoms of Jezebel and her witchcrafts are many. So there is no shalom in that. And I wanted to bring out what is witchcraft? Because we know like the enchantment. We, we know the, um, you know, the spells and people talk about the curses. And those are like the blatant forms. People are actually doing incantations and things like that. Yes. But witchcraft is more subtle than people understand. Witchcraft is intimidation, witchcraft is manipulation, and witchcraft is a type of domination. And when I say domination, it's like domination through gaslighting, domination through um, like twisting and distorting and coercing. That is all witchcraft. Yahuwah doesn't even move like that. And he could. He can make us do all kinds of stuff and he doesn't. So when we operate in that, we have now tapped into 
witchcraft. And that's why when we can't release control, when we have to control everything, that is a form of witchcraft. When we can't allow Yahuwah to be Yah, that is a form of witchcraft. And then sorcery. Sorcery can be seen as an effort to circumvent Yahuwah's knowledge and sovereignty and to worship anything outside of him, including ourselves, Satan, and any other false deities or people instead. So, and as I was writing this, it also came to me, sorcery, it's when you're being used by another power and authority, allowing its will to be manifested through you. So sorcery is a type of influence. So it's like a presence that you're allowing to control you. That's sorcery. When you are allowing, because as mankind, women, you know, mankind, through mankind, women, children, we're all created. We know the head is man. We are made to be embodied by Yahuwah. We were made to be used by Yahuwah and to fulfill his will on the earth. Through disobedience, we now gave our dominion to Hasatan and now the kingdom of darkness. Through obedience, we're able to be used by Yahuwah for his will. And that's what we are supposed to be made for. But through our constant rebellion, we've given our power to other false deities. So this is why it's so important to purge. And that's why Yah has just, I cannot release the purging and the cleansing. It's about purging and cleansing, self-examination, purging and cleansing. Because it's through this purge that we are able to break free from being brought up in dysfunction, being brought up in a land of nothing but um, unrighteous covenants. And I'm going to go ahead and read uh, Micah 5, 8 through 13. And it says, And the remnant of Yaqub shall be among the other nations, in the midst of many people, as a lion among the beasts of the forest, as a young lion among the flocks of sheep, who, if he go through, both treads down and tears in pieces, and none can deliver. Your hand shall be lifted up upon your adversaries, and all your enemies shall be cut off. And it shall come to pass in that day, says Yahuwah, that I will cut off your horses out of the midst of you, and I will destroy your chariots, and I will cut off your cities of your land, and throw down all your strongholds, and I will cut off witchcrafts out of your hand, and you shall have no more soothsayers. Your graven images also will I cut off, and your standing images out of the midst of you. And you shall no more worship the work of your hands. And the reason why I brought this scripture out, this is purging. We are to cut off all of these things. We're not to esteem these things. We're not to have covenant with these things. Cut off the soothsayers. Cut off the graven images. Cut off the standing images. Destroy, throw down all strongholds. Because these are the things that keep us bound in the spiritual realm. We have to cut off everything that is against Yahuwah. And that doesn't mean we don't be a light unto our family. That doesn't mean that sometimes you have to cut things off for a season till you get purged. And when you are at a place of purging, we're at a place of where you can be an actual light and example, then God might send you. But if you don't ever get fully delivered, all it is is nothing but transference of demonic. All it is is constantly, you can't be a light that way because you're playing lukewarm. There is no salvation in that. Yahuwah will spit you out of his mouth. And then I'm going to read Micah also continuing verses 14 and 15. It says, And I will pluck up your Asherah poles out of the midst of you. So I will destroy your cities and I will execute vengeance and anger and fury upon the heathen such as they have not heard. And this is him delivering us from the heathen. But these are the things that we have partaken in with the heathen. We have taken up their customs, their ways. Which in the Torah, in Deuteronomy, Exodus, it clearly tells us not to do that. 
This is why we got kicked out out of our land. It's because we started worshiping their Elohim. Started making Asherah poles. Started forsaking the Torah of our Elua. So we have to now destroy all these things and turn back to the Torah and the word and the obedience of our Elua. We must purge from these things and ask Yahuwah to reveal every crevice, every place of confession, every altar, everything in your bloodline, everything that everything you need to cast down and destroy. Everything you need to dismantle. That's the thing. That's what deliverance requires. Work. Deliverance requires work. And then 2 Chronicles, or Devari Hayamayim Shanai, it says, chapter 33, verse 3, it says, For he, uh, he built up again the high places, which Yashik Yahu, his father, had broken down. So we have to destroy these high places of all these false Elohim. And it says, And he reared up altars for Balaam and made Asherah poles and worship all the hosts of heaven and serve them. This is the things that keep us bound. Literally, you had a, his father broke all of these things down. Then the next generation, the son built them back up to all these false deities. We must purge from all that. Break down all of the altars of Balaam. Break down all of the Asherah poles. Break down and... and destroy all covenants we have made with all the hosts of heaven renounce and denounce all of these things because I guarantee if you grew up in the land of captivity we have worshipped these things unknowingly and sometimes even knowingly and then second uh, chronicles 33 and verse 6 says and he caused his children to pass through the fire in the valley of the, of the son of Hinnom also he practiced sorcery and used enchantments and used witchcraft and dealt with familiar spirits and with wizards he wrought much evil in the sight of Yahuwah to provoke him to anger and this is what's going on and I bring that out I talk about the assemblies but if you go up in church it's a circus that's this that's sorcery, that's enchantments, that's witchcraft, and that's familiar spirits. And then they'll be doing all these great things. And when you get in the emotions, it's like feelings, and you feel this, and you feel that. But at the end of the day, what happens? How do you know someone is truly set free? Because they're free indeed if it's Yahushua. That's how you know. And that's a huge thing. If Yahushua sets you free, you're free indeed. And what the Christianity has done for many people is that they think it's okay to constantly be in that black slitten state. Constantly live like our ancestors in and out of disobedience. That's not freedom. That's bondage. That's you being bound by rebellion. That, that's sorcery. That's witchcraft. It's you being bound by idolatry. That's not freedom. So if you're continuously in this cycle of backsliding, you haven't become free at all. You have tapped into the cycle of witchcraft and sorcery. So that's why it's so essential to be honest and to truly purge. And one scripture says, seek Yahuwah until he rains righteousness upon you. That is why it's diligence and discipline and persistence that we humble ourselves in the sight of Yahuwah. Then might he lift us up. Um, let me go to Galatians 5, 19 through 21. These are the works of the flesh. So when it's very easy to understand if you're free for something or not. If you're still engaging in the works of the flesh, you're not free. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such alike. Of the which I tell you before, as I have told you in the times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of Yahuwah. 
and that is Galatians 5 19 through 21. So if you are still engaging in any of these things, you are still bound to your flesh. You are still being ruled by a principality and you have not experienced freedom or deliverance. That's why we have to continue to pursue. Um, going back to Devarim, Deuteronomy 12, 30 and 32. It says, take heed to yourself that you be not snared by following them after they that be destroyed from before you. So Yahuwah is telling them all of the Hebusites, the Hittites, the Amorites, uh, the Jebusites, all of them. He's saying, I'm going to destroy them. Take heed you don't take after their customs. And that you inquire not after their Alahim, saying, How do these nations serve their Alahim? Even so will I do likewise. You should not do so unto Yahuwah Alua, for every abomination to Yahuwah, which he hates, have they done unto their Alahim. So all of the Alahim are having those people do abominations which Yahuwah hates. For even their sons and their daughters have they burnt in the fire to their Alahim. What things soever I command you, guard to do it. You should not add thereto, nor diminish it. That is the requirement of Yahuwah for his people. That we do not go after other Alahim. So now that we are realizing what we have and who we are, who Yahuwah is, we have to really destroy all of that and turn back to him to be set apart. There is no compromise when it comes to sanctification. There is no compromise, and I say kuda sha, which is holiness in English. There is no compromise to that. Yahuwah says, be ye holy for I am holy. Be ye kudash for I am kudash. I want a kudash nation. And it's not by our, people get caught up in, oh, you can't do it by your works. No, we cannot do it by our own works. But we can go to the feet Go uh, lay ourselves at the feet of Yahuwah. And you go through the door, Yahusha, and confess our sins and say, Yahuwah, please, I destroy, I renounce, and I denounce all of these things that I've done against you. Yahuwah, I'm fasting and praying that you may release me from this bondage that I put myself in from disobedience. Oh, Yahuwah, I'm fasting and I'm praying that you may release me from this bondage that my ancestors put us in for their disobedience. Oh, Yahuwah, show me the roots that I may uproot them, that Yahusha's blood may cleanse me. This is the work. Oh, Yahusha, break every stronghold that causes me to think perversely and dysfunctionally. Oh, Yahusha, purify my DNA. That I might be upright before you. That when you look at me, you see your son, Yahushua HaMashiach. These are the requirements. This is the daily work. This is the daily check. And let's put on Yahushua HaMashiach daily. People, no, we're not perfect in the flesh. If we walk in the flesh, there's no way we will ever be perfect. That's why Yahuwah requires us to kill the flesh. To walk in the spirit daily. And if you don't have the Ruach HaKodesh, seek him. Because it is a promise. It's a promise. And we must do the work to be filled with his Ruach. Not be stagnant in well-doing. But do be quick to do well. Because he says, my people are quick to do evil, but slow to do good. Let us not be that anymore. Uh, Exodus 34, 13 through 16 says, But ye shall destroy their altars. And this is what we have to do when we are seeking deliverance. We have to destroy the altars, break the images, cut down the Asherah poles. For you shall worship no other all. For Yahuwah Kana is my name. He is a jealous all. Lest you cut a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, and they go a whoring after their Allahim. And do sacrifices unto their Elohim, and one call you and you eat of his sacrifice, and take of their daughters unto your sons, and their daughters go a whoring after their Elohim, and make your sons go a whoring after their Elohim. And these are the things that we have to realize. We have, can no longer go a whoring after other Elohim. We must destroy the altars, break the images, and cut down the Asherah poles. 
And then when you think about images, sometimes we have to cut off things, cut off, if, if you have struggle with lust, are you willing to give up social media? Are you willing to give up TV? Are you willing to, these are the things. You wanna be free, what are you willing to do to get your freedom? If you know you have lust, why would you continue to do the things that you know trigger your lust? That's witchcraft and sorcery. That's why you're not able to break free. People are playing with Yah. They want a form of Yah in this, but they're denying the power of, of the true Yah. And we must repent for that. Because 2 Timothy 3, it clearly states, in the last days, perilous times are going to come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, uncontent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, high, high, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of Yahuwah, have a form of yaliness but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. And all of these things, we must repent. Repent for being lovers of ourselves. Repent for being covetous. Repent and renounce and denounce for being boasters and being proud and being blasphemers. Repent for being disobedient to our parents. Repent for being unthankful and unholy. Repent for not having natural affection. Repent for being truth breakers. Repent for being false accusers and incontinent. Fierce despisers of the things that are good. We have to repent, renounce, and denounce all these things. Repent for being traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of Yah. We all know that when we grow up in Western culture. We are taught to always be pleased and be entertained. That is literally what it's saying. In the last days, we're going to want pleasure more than we want Yah. We're going to want to watch TV more than we want to spend time in His Word. We're going to want to go to watch the game. We're going to want to go uh, do something fun rather than spend time in the secret place with the Most High God. We must repent for these things because that is a form of yaliness, not the true power thereof. And when we see people willfully doing this, we must turn away from them. But we have an opportunity to repent. And we know that these men who operate in that, they take captive silly woman later with sin. So the silly woman, we must repent for being silly woman. We must be repent for being led away with diverse lust. Ever learning and never able to come to the fullness of knowledge of the truth. We must repent. Hallelujah. And allow Yahuwah to truly cleanse us. Allow Yahuwah to really truly purge us. That it might not be witchcraft, but true, real deliverance. And I'm going to read uh, Debarim 7, 1 through 6. It says, When Yahuwah Elua shall bring you into the land, whether you go to possess it, and has cast out many nations before you, the Hittim and the Gergeshim, and the Emarim and the Canaanim, and the Perizim and the Hethim and the Yebusim, seven nations greater and mightier than you. And when Yahuwah Elua shall deliver them before you, you shall smite them and utterly destroy them. You shall cut no covenant with them, no show mercy unto them, neither shall you make marriages with them. Your daughter shall not give unto his son, nor his daughter shall you take unto your son. For they will turn away your son from following me, that they may serve other Allahim. So will the anger of Yahuwah be kindled against you and destroy you suddenly. But thus shall ye deal with them. Ye shall destroy their altars, break down their images, and cut down their Ashishar pools, and burn their graven images with fire. For you are a Kadesh people unto Yahuwah Alua. Yahuwah Alua has chosen you to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. And once again, I'm giving you guys a lot of examples, and I'm trying to give you these examples because this is how true deliverance is. He gives us a clear tells us what to do number one we shouldn't cut covenants we know that we already made covenants with these elohim so we have to destroy and break those covenants we have to again burn all of their idols hewn down them and then we have to destroy the altars break down the pillars burn the ashes poles with fire that's the ruach hakodesh overthrow their altars by the power of yahusha for he is the ultimate authority that no principality can pre prevail against. 
And then I'm gonna go to Barak 66 and two, it says, and he cleansed the land from idols and sanctified all the vessels which had been polluted and restored the offerings to the altar and raised the horn of the holy and exalted the righteous and honored all that were wise and understanding and brought back the priests to their ministry and destroyed and removed the magicians and enchanters and necromancers from the land. And this is Baruch, Baruch, Second Baruch 66 and 2. And this is so important because many people are just being moved by the necromancers and the enchanters and the magicians. That is not of Yahuwah. The land has to be cleansed from the, land, from the idols, sanctified, fasting and prayer, that sanctification, being purged. Renouncing and denouncing, destroying the altars, that's cleansing yourself. A lot of people don't like to be diligent in fasting and prayer. That is a requirement because certain things only come out through fasting and prayer. We are in such a war with the kingdom of darkness. We need to be equipped in fasting and prayer that the authority of Yahusha may reign supreme over our lives. That is Ruach may reign supreme. That when we say to the unclean Ruach host, leave, it must leave. That's why fasting and prayer is essential. And it's getting to the time where we can't ride off in no one else's, no one else's anointing. You must seek Yahuwah and have that anointing within you. And that's why when you read about the five wise and the five foolish versions, some were right, they didn't have enough oil in their lamps. They wanted to take from someone else. But there's a time where we gotta have enough oil in our lamps for ourselves. Because we're going to need it for ourselves. We're not going to be able to always give our virtue to everyone else. People always want, oh, pray for me, pray for me. You have to learn how to pray for yourself and to break free from things from yourself through the power of Yahushua. That's why he's saying, who do you know me? If you're going off with this person's anointing and that person's anointing, how you know? do you know Yahushua for yourself? Has he came and delivered you? Have you experienced him in a mighty way? Ecclesiasticus 38 and 10 says, leave off from your sin and order your hands aright and cleanse your heart from all wickedness. That's Ecclesiasticus 38 and 10. And then um, Matif Yahu says, and behold, there come a leopard and worship saying, Adonai, if you will, can, if you will, you can make me clean. This is what we got to say to Yahushua. Adonai, if you will, you can make me clean. And if Yahushua put forth his hand and touched him saying, I will be clean and immediately he was his leprosy was cleansed immediately he can cleanse us from all uncleanness immediately just by one word can we be made whole but we have to really come before him in humility and a contrite heart Matif Yahu 10, 5 through 8, it says, These twelve Yahushua sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go into the way of the other nations and into the city of the Shemer, Shemerim. Enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Yashreel. And as ye go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, rise, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely ye have received, received. freely ye have received, freely give. That's Matif Yahu 10, 5 through 8. And then, you know, he told Yahushua told Jehuqanah when he was in prison, Matthew 11, 5 and 6, the blind receive their sight and the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up and the poor have the bestower. Preach to them and blessed is he. Whosoever shall not be offended in me. So Yahushua, he is that rock, that cornerstone that many find offense in. But Barak is he that is able to not be offended in Yahushua. That is where the deliverance is. Yahusha, deliverance, salvation, wholeness. Yahusha, through Yahuwah, Yahuwah is salvation. So we have to go through Yahusha for our deliverance. There's no other way, there's no other dialect, no other door. Everything else is a thief and a robber, which is witchcraft and sorcery. So Matif Yahu 26, uh, chapter 23, verses 26 to 27. It says, you're blind Pharisee, you blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup and, pl and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. Woe well unto you, scribes and Pharisee, hypocrites, for you are like unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful on the outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. And he goes on to say a lot, but I just want to touch on that. 
that we don't want to look good on the outside, be full of dead bones on the inside. We want to be honest with ourselves, so we will not be hypocrites. We want to dismantle pride. We want to dismantle and destroy all hate, malice, and contention. All of the works of the flesh. That we will be truly delivered. Because when we have these doors open that enemies can come in and out of, they can use you. That's witchcraft. If they can come in and out of us and use us, we are still in a place of sorcery where, where our influence can be impacted by a whole other deity. We want only Yahuwah through Yahushua Mashiach because we want Kodesh to be able to influence us, nothing else, because we have sealed all the doors shut. So we must mature and ascend to the place where your, only Yahuwah can rest in us. Only Yahuwah can dwell within us. He doesn't want us to have him and some other deity. He wants it to only be him. So until it's only him, then it's a strange fire. And then I'm going to go on to Acts 10, 15. And it says, And the voice spoke unto him again the second time, What Alua has cleansed, that call not common. So when Yahuwah has cleansed it, it's no longer common. And we'll go to Jacob 4, 8 through 10. Draw nigh to Alua, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of Yahuwah, and he shall lift you up. Jacob 4, 8 through 10. And then 2 Corinthians 7 and 1 says, Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and ruach, perfecting kudashah, holiness, in the fear of Yahuwah. 2 Corinthians 7 and 1. And then Ephesians 5, 26 to 27 says, That he might sanctify it and cleanse it. This is Yahushua cleansing his assembly with the washing of the water by the word. That he might present it to himself a glorious, cold out assembly, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be only kudash and without blemish. And then we have 1 Yehuganon 5 through 7. It says, This then is the message that we have heard and declare unto you that Alua is light, and him and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he's in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Yahushua Mashiach, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Hallelujah. And so we have to realize if we're saying we're walking in the light we cannot have fellowship with darkness if fellowship with darkness is still going on then we are lying to ourselves and we must repent and we must renounce and denounce these things we have to be honest we have to be real goes on to say um verses 8 through 10 of first john it says if we say that we have no sin we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness if we say that we have not sinned we make him a liar and his word is not in us and the word says you know let every man be a liar let yahuwah be true so we know that we all have sin and come short of the glory of yah and i've seen this in many a times and it's the saddest thing when all you have to do is confess your sin but you choose to lie that's sorcery. That's something that, that's a demonic entity making you want to be in covenant with that lie more than you want to be in covenant with Yahuwah. And when we lie to ourselves, it, we're blinding ourselves, we deceive ourselves, and Yahuwah allows it. He will turn us over to our own wickedness if we consistently choose that. So we must be diligent and humble ourselves and ask him to take away the, the dysfunction of our ways, the dysfunction of our thinking, the dysfunction of our mind, the dysfunction of our heart, the dysfunction of our souls. Because we have been brought up in dysfunction. And only he could do such a miracle. That's why it says he doesn't do it for our sake. He does it for his name's sake, his kudash name's sake. And for the covenant he made with Abraham, the Yashak and Yakub. And then I'm going to go to uh, Yashayahu, Isaiah 1, 18 through 19. It says, Come now and let us reason together, says Yahuwah. Through, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be like red, like crimson, they shall be as wool. If you be willing and obedient. If ye be willing and obedient. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. 
We must be willing and we must be obedient. Have to be. That is how we will eat the good of the land. There's no other way around that. Being willing and obedient to your Lord. Uh, Psalms 119 and 9 says, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to your word. The word. And who is the word? Yahusha. He is the living word. The word made flesh that dwelt among us. The perfect word of Yahuwah. That had been the example for us. And paved the way. He goes before us and is behind us. He's the Aleph and the Tav. So we must allow ourselves to be yoked to Yahusha, the mature one, that we might go on to maturity. And Yahukanon 8, 34 to 36 says, Yahusha answered them, Amen, Amen, I say unto you, whosoever commits sin is the servant of sin, and the servant abides not in the house forever, but the son abides ever. If the son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. So we are not to be bondsmen and bondswomen. We are to be the daughters and the sons of the house. If you are not the son of the house, you will not be able to abide with Yahuwah forever. He made, that's why Yahusha came to make us joint heirs. So we could be sons and daughters of Yahuwah. That through Yahusha, we might be able to receive the inheritance. But if he sets you free, you're free indeed. So that's how you know, I believe, people don't understand witchcraft. And I know people use shawu. And it's one thing when you're battling and you're fighting to overcome. It's another thing when you have completely, you're remaining in covenant with sin. And I think, you know, like shows, like I, when I want to do good, sin is always with me. That's the battle of the flesh and the ruwa. And I, you know, that's just the battle. But it's like when people are just doing willful blatant sin are they really wanting to do good no so that's a deception that's that's witchcraft a sorcery yahuwah allows like he allows lying spirits and the deceiving spirits to be able to manifest if you read how like you know the council and he's like a, a spirit came and was like oh i'll i'll lie I'll, I'll give them a lying spirit where they'll believe a false prophet that's, that's witchcraft but Yah allows it so we have to be able to really humble ourselves before Yahuwah that he will either open our eyes from such things that he will give us ears to hear and eyes to see through our humbleness that he might deliver us or that he doesn't turn us over to it where we can't see where we don't fear him that he restores to us the fear of him this is true deliverance the work it's everyday work We've spent more time in sin than we have in truth. It's going to take work. But we're not saved by our works. That doesn't mean Yahuwah don't require works. And he's going to examine our works. And I think people use the grace as an excuse to keep going in sin. And then I'm going to go on to 1 Timothy 5 and 22. And it says, Lay hands on no man suddenly. Let me read that again. Lay hands suddenly on no man, neither be partaker of other men's sins. Keep yourself pure. And this is another thing. Like I said, the witchcraft is so subtle. A lot of that stuff, when you see people praying and laying hands and doing all that stuff, they ain't even themselves free, but they laying hands on you. Now you bound with what they bound with, and now there's like a transference of deities. Now you're struggling more than you were struggling before you got prayed for. That ain't freedom, that's bondage. And then people always use that story about, yes, when the house is clean. Yes, if the house is clean, you should fill yourself up with your husha. If the house is, that's why it's like laying hands on no man suddenly. You laying hands on a person suddenly and they don't really want to fill themselves up with your husha. They're going to be in worse condition than before you laid hands on them. And then it's easy if you're laying hands on people who aren't really wanting deliverance you can easily become a partaker of their sins because a lot of these things are rituals and covenants like laying hands and eating with somebody those are rituals and covenants sometimes we're eating with people who in willful sin and now we become a partaker of their sin 
these are things that we have to become more aware of because this is how witchcraft comes in the mix. This is how witchcraft is able to keep us bound. Okay, and then I'm going to go to Revelations 2 and 14. And it says, but I have a few things against you because you have there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Yahshua to eat things sacrificed unto idols and to commit fornication. And as I've talked about before, many things people don't realize, I had to learn this and just knowing this, sex is an initiation into witchcraft and sorcery. People don't understand that. If you're doing a law full of fornication, you're doing fornication or adultery, you are engaging it literally sexual initiations where now prince, higher principalities can have access to you, higher um, demons and rankings. So that's why you start acting crazier and crazier the more you 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 indulge in a sinful life because these spirits have legal rights to you now. Um, if it's with the blood or the body, which is where sexual or um, bodily um, fluids come out, that's deeper initiations. So there's rituals through sex and there's rituals through like blood sacrifices. That's why it's saying sacrifice, eating things sacrificed unto idols. And then it goes on to say, so have also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaucene, which thing I hate. Repent or else I will come unto you quickly and I will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. And that's Revelations 2, 15 through 16. And it says, they. Um, this is when I looked up Nicolosim. I didn't go super in depth. You can do your own research on the Nicolosim. But we know that the Nicolosim also had a perverse doctrine. I don't, you know, some people say they were into a lot of like, you know, um, what is it called? Uh, orgies and things like that. Doing all type of wickedness and sexual perversion. And then this, uh, as I was researching it, said they abandoned themselves to, ple to pleasure like goats, leading a life of self-indulgence. Their teachings perverted grace and repa replace freedom with license. So like a license to sin. And we see that definitely today. That's the doctrine of the Nicholas scene where people use, oh, we have grace, we have grace to do self-indulgence, to go do things against the Most High Yah. That's the doctrine of the Nicholas scene. And then I'm going to read this last uh, scripture, Revelations 2, 20 through 25. It says, Notwithstanding, I have a few things against you, because you suffer them that woman Isabel, or Jezebel, which calls herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants, to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed. And them that commit fornication with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds, and I will kill her children with death, and all the called out assembly shall know that I am he, which searches the minds and hearts, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works according to your works but unto you i say and unto the rest in theatera as many as have not this doctrine and which have not known the depths of satan as they speak i will put upon you no other burden but that which ye have already hold fast hold fast till i come hallelujah and total about for the reading of his word so i just leave you with all of this i thank y'all for this but yes the doctrine of isabel a lot of people look at isabel as a prophet um as one who's just like always going against like almost being against and not submissive that is not isabel at all um you know isabel is a very uh, manipulative spirit and it operates in both men and women and it seduces people to the point where they're believing a lie rather than the truth to the to the point where they they're worshiping another deity and they think they're worshiping yeah that's how subtle this spirit is and the isabel spirit can hide in assemblies very easy it's the spirit that influences the the headship to do evil it's the spirit that influences people to it's okay to do fornication it's okay to go commit adultery it's okay like it, it seduces spirit it's very seductive and that's why we have to understand truly the depths of witchcraft, truly the depths of sorcery. Because what many are thinking is being deliverance isn't. Because when the sun sets you free, you're free indeed. I have one, a few seconds to share my brief testimony, but I was telling this to my mom. Like when Yah delivers you something, you'll know it's Yah because there's no way in the world you could ever go back. And I know for me, like when Yah delivered me through Yahushua, I knew I could never go back to things He delivered me from. If I did, 
he, he let me know I'd be in a rapper based. So just please seek Yahuwah, know his voice, ask him to give you the rock of discernment to know the counterfeit from the true. Much shalom, much ahava. I love you all. And may Yah lead and guide you through your deliverance journey. Shalom, shalom.